Peace, family. Peace, bro. How you doing, man? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm well, man. Well, dealing with the elements. You know what I mean? No doubt. I appreciate you joining us this evening. I really don't want to waste any time. We only got uh, uh, some minutes, 50 minutes to get into a, a long list of your discography. That's uh, nothing but classics. But I can't get into everything. But I do want to touch on uh, some of your best memories uh, going into some of these uh, classic uh, albums that you've been a part of. Uh, Peace Hip Hop X, Caskets, Peace of the Gods, Tony Mank, you already Brady Cash. What's up, family? You already no know. Doubt. If All I, right, let's, let's let's get into it, man. I'm ready, man. I I, I uh I gotta put my I gotta put my uh my inspector decks on. <laughs> no doubt. My Fred G. Sanford. Yes, sir. <laughs> I got some too. I need to put mine on. Uh just to oh, give uh man. the viewers a little background, a little history about yourself. Can you take us back to where you were born and raised? Born and raised in Brooklyn, Bucktown, USA, Brownsville. You know what I mean? Um I also, I mean, I lived all throughout Brooklyn, but Brownsville, that's where, that's where I started at. That's, that's my, that's my home where I was born in, in uh, Kings County Hospital, County of Kings. And a lot of days on the Brooklyn streets, man. Flatbush, East Flatbush, Crown Heights, Canarsie, um, East New York, you know what I mean? All over. Can you take us back to a day in the life of uh, still as a teenager growing up in those Brooklyn streets? Um, day in the life as a teen, man, is, is, is survival, you know. Um, learning a lot from the elders. You know, me growing up, it was a lot of a lot of the, uh, uh, community value to the hood. Like, it was a lot of fucked up shit, but you learned from that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, communities really, right, like, it really took the, uh, how do you say, the, the tribe. You know, I grew up where a lot of families were still in the projects. So my family members knew other family members. Like, my aunts knew other aunts and uncles, so on and so forth. So kids couldn't really get away with too much stuff, you know. Salute, Elkie. Um, but it was, a, it, was a, it, was, it was a very cultural family environment growing up. And it was dangerous, man. It was extremely dangerous. But, it, but you, learned, you learned your parameters, especially growing up in Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? Brooklyn can, period. Can you take us back to your earliest memories of hip hop firsthand, not just by radio, not by TV, but firsthand? What were you seeing in these Brooklyn streets? Uh, uh, some of the MCs or producers around your way uh, that made you uh, take interest in hip hop? Uh, uh, I was have Sean the Barbarian. What's up, my 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 niece Shawnee P is on on the thread right now. What's up, baby? What's up, Bobos? What's going on? <laughs> Tomorrow we tomorrow we commemorate on the eighth. We commemorate in the life and times of Sean Price. Um, when I was about eight years old, I met Sean Price um, at this, uh, this 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 uh, I guess the center, this cultural center in the neighborhood called uh, Heritage House. Um, at that time, I had no inkling of being a rapper, an artist, nothing like that. But um, we was exposed to music. We we also had was a, it was a brother in there uh, um, that um, he's a, he's influential in the in the, in the um, his name's Shabal. He influential in Seven Universal. That's uh, Rose family. He's one of the first artists that signed the Rockers when Rockers first um, bust up. And Sunshine, his brother Sunshine, rest in peace. But these brothers is from Brownsville, and they were some of the influential cats that I came up under, not knowing that any of that was going to matter later on. Um, that's the hands-on. As far as, like, like I, I never had any exposure. I ain't know no, no, no famous people. People used to come through the hood. Mike Tyson had family in my projects. Rest in peace, the OG app. That's his cousin, but... um. You know, cash used to come through. We, we, we. I live on um, Belmont Avenue. They had two stores. Uh, one's called Harry's and one called Simon's. Every Easter, every Christmas, that's where everybody wanted to go and get their gear from. But every once in a while, you have rappers like Big Daddy Kane, LL Cool J come through and shut the block down, shut the stores down, go in there. So you sometimes they'll get close to the hood and they be in there with their dapper dance stuff in there, just buying sneakers and stuff like that. That was, you know... Other than that, just neighborhood stuff, man. Block parties, you know, big, big, uh, big uh, joints in the in the park. 
you know, the OGs, like the OG, the OG uh, DJs that don't got no name. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's always some of those. You know what I mean? House parties. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what was the moment that you uh, decided to put the pad to the pin? Queen B. Pad to what, the pin? Yeah. Oh, what moment? Give us a year. Give us a moment uh, that you decided to take this hip hop serious. Oh, man, I, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, coming up in the hood, like, you you always kind of want something to do with it. You think you're a rapper. Um, so, you know, being a fan of it, you, you, you dibble and dabble. So probably, like, in middle school, I was dibbling and dabbling, like, 13, 14. But I wasn't serious at all. Um, high school, probably, like, after, like, like, the end of ninth year, I probably got more serious. Um, I had a partner, uh, my first partner, my first rap partner was, was a brother by the name of Chase from, from, from Chauncey Street, you know what I mean? Up the hill, Brownsville. Um, and, uh, he, he, he pretty much showed me the ropes as far as recording. And, um, like I had no style. I was like, I was just like a square, bro. Like I just love rap, but I was like, you know, I, I, I he, he probably saw the potential. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, you're going to be my partner. That's what he said. He seen me in lunch. He's like, yo, you're going to be my partner. I'm like, yeah, I got like three laps, bro, three. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't ringing no bells, nothing. But I was like, you know, I was writing, and I was, I was always, like, keen to studying and reading and, 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 like, analyzing different styles. So after a while, I started to, like, basically copy everybody's style. Like, I had a Big Daddy King rap. I had a KRS one rom, I had a Chuck D rom, you know what I mean? I had a Tretch rom and, 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 and then practicing, I would spit those until I eventually developed my own style. And, and salute to my boot camp family because that, that helped chisel a lot of that out too, you know? Uh before House of me, reps. Performing uh Smith and Wesson and getting with the BCC and all those guys, uh, what was kind of uh the days of uh paying your dues? What kind of dues do you pay early on? Uh, in the rap game, uh, uh, paying dues in, early in the rap game, man, is a lot of a lot of rumbles, like physical, physical, physical fighting your way out of the clubs. Is a, is a lot of dealing with uh, janky promoters. Um, being young and getting into it, like we wasn't, we was willing to do whatever. We was ready to bang out, but we was having more fun. And, and initially, we wasn't really getting a whole lot of money in the first place. It was more about the exposure. So we just wanted our sound system, you know, being in the early days, everybody was like, yo, turn my mic up. You know, <laughs> a lot a lot of that, a lot of turn my mic up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, you know, as you get older, you learn how to communicate a little bit better when it comes to the sound. That's what the sound checks is important and stuff like that. But we always wanted to communicate with the people. We wanted the people to hear what we were bringing to them. And it was just, it was just a learning course, man. It was a learning course. So it was the good, bad, and the ugly. I enjoy every minute of it, man. The fights, everything, man. Word. Can you uh, take us back and kind of connect the dots? I mean, we see you guys as a crew and a unit, but can you take us back to the earlier formation of the BCC? Uh, who did you know personally uh, first out of the crew that led you uh, to the next uh, crew or clique uh, to get uh, the BCC formed? Knowledge born. Peace to the God. Peace, cuzzo. Um, well, I never, I never really, you know, we, it's funny because no boot camp member really claimed to be the leader of the boot camp clique. Um, I would say that I was probably the first, I was the first person to rhyme out of all of these guys. And, um, when I met Rock, Rock lived across the street from me. I was introduced to Rock and his monster by my uncle. He was like, yo, you got to meet this kid, Jamal. He's nice. So when I met Rock, he was already nice, but we wasn't boot camp. You know, it was no group, none of that stuff. Now at that point, we just was hanging out. Now I, I was I was friends with Tech in high school, um, but Tech wasn't rhyming just just as yet. Top Dog, that's my little brother. He wasn't rhyming just yet. I didn't even know Louisville. I didn't know Strain, and I knew Sean from when I met him when I was a kid, eight years eight eight years old. So I was still on my on my solo mission. Um, you know, running through trying to, you know, learn my learn lessons and all of that. 
And then it formulated because we spent so much time together. Rock was already nice. So when we started to like practice, we had practice sessions. We literally was having practice sessions. Um, we had practice sessions at the dog hilly, like that's real, but we was having a practice session at the House of Reps, which is my blood cousin, Supreme the Elohim from the representative. That's my family, that's my blood, that's my mom, that's my mom and nephew. So we I, I just hijacked his crib. And we used to all bun rush there and we practice in there and um we used to make cassettes. And at the time the name of our crew was like M O S T, you know, major organized sound troopers. Um, but we also came from that Decepticon claw. So we was always dealing with this type of street discipline. And as it as it evolved, it, it, it turned into um boot camp click. We knew we had to uh, solidify it. Salute DJ Dice from Brooklyn, East New York. Wagwan. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, at what point uh, did you and Tech decide to form uh, Smith & Wesson? We was in high school, man. We were just about to beat some people up. And um, it was super hectic. It was super tense. Uh, salute Ross Fire, my, my, my Miami Connect out there. But we, yo, Tech, me and Tech, like I always was, bit, I was always like a, a kind of like an introvert. You know, and Tech was a dude, he was, I guess we both was like introverts. Compared to the people that we used to hang around, it was like a lot of loud mouth cats, a lot of hardcore tough guys. And I wasn't nothing like that. You know what I mean? I was, you know, I was a soldier. I was on my grunt work and um, following and, le and, and learning, learning this, and learning the script. And, you know, a lot of times me and Tech used to just be in the back, just waiting for the thing to happen. You know what I mean? Wait for our instruction. So we would have more conversations about stuff where other where other guys would, you know, be popping off and we'd be like, all right, when, when it's time for us to move, it's time for us to move. But in that regards, we spent a lot of time together. I gotta give a lot of credit to my big bro, Cookie Head, um, for Brie Void Projects and um and, and big old uh big Rambo, rest in peace. Um, these two guys, when we talk about PNC, like these are the guys that really like I, I Cookie had introduced me in tech. So if not for our friendship and our union, then it would be no Smith and Wesson. You know what I mean? So that's how that go. Uh early on you guys appeared on Black Moon's Enter the Stage album, uh on the tracks uh Black Smith and Wesson and You the Man. Uh can you take us back to those sessions? Yeah, man, it was cold, we was broke, we were sharing hot chocolate, hopping the train. We was making sure that we was at every session that uh, Black Moon had. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Caskets. You with the guy Rim Sun. <laughs> Take your dollar vans when it was a dollar. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, by any means necessary, you get to the studio. We break, we break in day, we break in night. We waking up in the studio. You know what I mean? Hopping the train before the police get there. We was in support of our brothers at the same time. We was learning a lot. And... um you know, big up to Beat Miners, because those guys was, those, they, you know, they was definitely in pocket as far as the production and stuff like that. Tech and I was really uh, amateurs, novices when it came to the studio. We used to go to the studio when I was doing my little solo joints, but, you know, we didn't know nothing about that. That's, that's like, we didn't know what we was doing in there. Looping beats and all that, that's crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. But, you know, we, we stuck around. That's when, that's, when, that's when you hear the, the, the phrase, like, play your position. Like Tech and I played our position, and we sat in the studio till it was our time. And 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 you know probably at the end of the in, in eleventh inning, Buck was like, "Yo, we're gonna do this joint tonight." We was like, "Word, let's go." We was ready. I don't know if we had had the right rhymes on the spot or they was written, um, but I believe you know I believe everything was fresh and crispy, and we got to it, and it was like that was really for us like a big breakthrough. Um, as far as like, put, you know, we was, we knew it was gonna come on wax, so that was that was the beginning of us like having to get really concentrated in it, you know. What was your uh, best memory of working and witnessing Black Moon create their debut album? The best memory working with them, yeah, oh, on man, that debut I, album. I um, yeah, I, it's so many, man. Like we, like we 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 literally moved the hood into D and D studios, man. Like we we had so many people with us, we had to get the A room is the big room, so we had to take the big room. Like, like it was no arguing about it. Like we brought like at least fifteen twenty people to the studio. Like when you listen to 
the background of our record, that's our friends. <laughs> like, now when people sample a background, like, y'all need car noise. Like, we got people that just make enough noise and make it sound like it's outside. We'll, right. We'll, we'll, we'll have an experience. So every session with, um, with, with Black Moon was an experience. Um, getting to know the engineers, getting to know the, 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 how the room sounds. You know, we did everything in that A room. We slept in that A room. We smoked in that A room. We ate in that A room. We played. We, we had a couple of fights, a couple of boxing matches in there. So it was really a, a family environment, like being in the crib. And um, D&D accommodated that, too. So just that, that whole learning process, man, was, you know, was priceless. You know what I'm saying? After your appearance on that album, uh, was there a bidding war? Or did you guys... Um immediately entertain um signing with uh duck down uh, no nah, i wasn't no bidding war for us man we it was young bucks man i mean we was rolling with the rush like we was with the family it wasn't even about uh being on a label or whatever like we was with family we know i buck we was friends we had built up a relationship um before signing and we pretty much was like we're gonna roll with with with, with buck Wherever he at, we're gonna roll because Buck at that point, you know, he, he was partnered up with Drew. Drew was a silent partner, um, who was being groomed to to, to become the management. Because initially, uh Chuck Chillout was their manager, Black Moon manager. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then um Drew Howe was a Drew Howe was a uh uh intern. You know, but he was he was he was, you know, he was soaking it up. And him and him and Buckshot built a, a, an incredible relationship. So we, on top of that, we was already in our family. Like, I already named you all of the boot camp cats. All of them cats are from my hood. You know what I'm saying? Most of them, like, like 80, 80, 90 percent of them guys is from my hood. You know what I mean? So we was already over here doing our one twos because that's what the neighborhood was about. We was in the crib getting our little one twos. It was a couple of rap. It was a couple of rap crews that was out, and. You know, dudes, there's a, there's a couple of, I can't remember the, I can't remember the uh, artists, but a lot of guys was out there, they was mad conceited, man. You know what I'm saying? It was like, we was like, yo, wait, we was a little, we was a little dudes on the block. So we was like, yo, wait till we, wait till we bust. You know what I mean? All these, these like, all these old heads, like, what was, all these old heads were trying to, were trying to block us out. But, um, you know, we was, we was, we had great relationships in the neighborhood. So it wasn't like no drama, no, no, no real craziness like that. You know what I mean? So, in uh, 1994, you finally got to bus, and you guys released uh, the classic single, Bucktown. Uh, can you take us back to recording that single? Recording Bucktown was, uh, was euphoric, man. Um, we watched, we watched uh, Black Moon in the studios. We learned from them. But when we found D&D, we found a home. You know what I'm saying? Hell, Meg. Hell, Meg, salute to all my Decepticons out there. You already know with flavor. You know what I mean? Um, when we found we when we found D and D, we found a home. We found some place that would receive us organically, and we can work, and we can be comfortable, we can be safe. And um, I think we was probably like the guinea pigs to to really kick it off. Cause Black Moon did they they did their album like in the um in a couple of a couple of different studios until we found D and D. So I would think our D and D became our home. You know, we got we got became great friends with Dave, Doug and Dave, which were the owners of D and D. We knew pretty much everybody that worked here. And 